Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are learning how to animate with Enscape 3.0. So this is going to be an overview of the animation settings and an overall how-to tutorial with tips for creating architectural animation with Enscape. So before we get started, hit that subscribe button and the bell notifications to get notified of our next video tutorial. So let's get started by opening the video editor. You can click on this icon here or press V on your keyboard. To access some helpful tips, hit H on your keyboard to review the navigation controls and right next to it, you can also access specific controls for the video editor. So Enscape 3 has a very simple video editing interface. Here you have the option to load and save animation path or camera movement presets. Next, we have the option to show the grid lines. This will overlay the rule of third grid over your render window. And this is a perfect tool that helps you with rendering composition. Next, we get the movement and keyframe settings. And at the bottom here, we have the preview controls, keyframe controls, and of course, your video timeline. Now, in able to create a basic animation in Enscape, you need at least two keyframes. So first, you want to position your camera, and then you want to hit this plus icon or hit K on your keyboard to set that first keyframe. So now you want to move your camera to the second position, and again, hit K or this plus icon to set that keyframe. Now if you check on your timeline, you can see that you now have two keyframes out of four seconds apart. Now this right here is the time that it takes for your camera to move from that first frame to the second frame. And you can control that time by changing it here. So I'm going to change this to 8 seconds and preview to see what we got. So this is pretty good for a basic animation and you can start to build on this by adding more keyframes and testing out camera rotation movements. If you zoom out from your camera position, you will notice two cameras representing the two keyframes and a thick black line representing the 8 second camera path. And if you hover over that path, you will notice another camera icon. So this is letting you know that you can add another keyframe in that position. So let's click anywhere on this path to add another keyframe. You can adjust your camera position if needed. Update that keyframe and exit this edit mode. So not only do you have three keyframes here, you will also notice that you have three keyframes on your timeline. Now you want to keep in mind that you can also add keyframes to your timeline by clicking on these plus icons. So first you want your camera position set. Once that's done, hit one of these plus icons to set that frame. And if you look closely, you can see that we now have four keyframes on our timeline. Now adding keyframes can also increase the time of your animation. And sometimes the speed can appear a little inconsistent because of the time difference between the mid frames. So unless that is intentional, a nice way to keep your animation consistent is to adjust the timestamp for those frames. So let's edit our second frame. And under the frame override, you can enable the timestamp of when you want this frame to be set on your timeline. So frame number two appears four seconds after the first frame. And frame number three will appear eight seconds after the first frame. So by adjusting these mid frames and keeping a reasonable time between them, you can keep a smooth and consistent camera movement. Next, we're going to look into the camera movement settings, and these are meant to add unique movement transitions to your video. So without any of these settings, you already have the equivalent of a nice stabilized shot. Easy in and out adds a very nice speed transition that reduces the camera movement within the first few seconds and also reducing the speed towards the last few seconds. Next is shaky camera. This adds a handheld camera movement to your shot. Think of it as if you were walking and holding the camera at the same time. So both of these are really nice features to have. To me, it's more of a preference feature. So I encourage you to get creative and see what you can create. 
So when you're editing keyframes, there are a few more overrides that you have control over, so you can add a little more into your shots. And that will be these three over here. So time of day lets you control the time between two keyframes, which will allow you to animate your sun, the sky, and the shadows. So for this example, I'm going to enable the time of day for the first keyframe. And I'm going to change the time to 7.30 a.m. So let's move into the second keyframe and do the same thing. So here I'm going to increase the time to 8 a.m. And as you preview, you can see that the short time difference gives a very subtle animation for the sun as well. You can see the clouds moving and the shadows start to come in a little more. With this override, you can also go for a hyperlapse effect. So you simply need to set a longer time difference to sell the illusion that the sun and clouds are moving faster. Next, we got the focal point, which works best if you have some depth of field. So if you open your visual effects, go under the main settings and adjust the depth of field slider so you can see the effect. And you also want to uncheck the autofocus. As for the focal point slider, this is going to let you set the distance and control what stays in focus. So for the very first keyframe, I'm going to set the focal distance close to the camera. As for your second keyframe, you want to set the focal distance away from the camera or you can set the focus to a subject if you have one in your shot. And if you do this right, you should have an effect like this. And last, we have the field of view, which lets you control the angle of view in your render window. Now, the view angles can equal to specific lengths, focal length that are used in real life photography. So some of these are grouped as wide angle lengths, narrow and telephoto, and some lengths are just a normal length. But to keep it simple for this video, the higher the field of view angle, the wider the view becomes in your render window. So to see the field of view in action, the camera position is in the same location for both of the frames. So when you preview, there's no movement at all. Now let's enable the field of view for both frames and decrease the values from the first frame to the second frame. So as you can see, even without any movement to the camera position, the field of view narrows down and we can see less and less in our render view from that same position. And it almost looks as if we're walking forward. So another tip when using the field of view, if you add the right camera movement, you can create a nice dolly zoom effect, which is also known as the vertical effect in filmmaking. So enable for this to work well, you need to match the position of the second frame to somehow match the frame position of the field of view in the first frame. Since the field of view is already giving us the intention that we're moving forward, we need the camera position in the second frame to move backwards. So this might take a little bit of adjustment, but if you get it right, the effect will look something like this. And that is a very quick demonstration of what you can do with the field of view. And remember, you can use all of these overrides in one shot if you need to. But in my opinion, an effective animation can be as simple as a slow camera movement as you let the context speak for itself. In this example, I rendered this same camera path twice one with the lights off and the other with the lights on. And with a very simple fade transition in Premiere, I was able to give the illusion that the lights were switched on in an animation sequence. And that's gonna be all for this video. Remember that you can always save your camera path, so later on you can adjust your camera movements. And whenever you are ready to export your animations, you have the options between 30 frames, 60, and 120 frames per second. The higher the frame rate, the slower the rendering time, and the smoother the animation. So thank you if you've reached the end of the video. Hopefully you've learned something new. And be sure to check out the Enscape YouTube channel and their website for more information. As always, be sure to like the video, share, and subscribe as it helps with the growth of this channel. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.